Hello, hey. it's very nice Hello. to meet you both. <laughs> Hello, Marielle, it's so great to meet you. Good, Good to meet, meet you. you. What are you discussing on today? We don't actually know what any of these talks are about. Like every talk that comes up, we're like, ooh, what is it? <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, web vulnerabilities. Ooh. ooh, yes. The number one cloud attacks, the, the number one attack service besides cloud that like no one understands. <laughs> web is my bread and butter, literally. It's like <laughs> all things. I'm very excited. By the way, I've followed you on LinkedIn for like so long. I love your content over there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for wearing your cool t-shirt you're wearing today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I have a mission like every t-shirt, like every every speaking thing I do to wear someone else's t-shirt. But all right, it's Gabrielle's time. 115. She's gonna take it away with some web vulnerabilities. Good luck. You got it. Thank you very much. So hello everyone and thank you for coming to GrimCon and for attending my talk. So first of all, I'm going to present myself. Um, my name is Gabrielle Botbol and I am a Parisian woman living in Montreal. And I work as an offensive security consultant at Desjardins, which is a Canadian financial services cooperative and the largest federation of credit union in North America. I am also a blogger and a podcaster, and I am the Vice President Communications of NorSec Conference in Montreal. And I was recently honored for my career and contribution to the cyber community by being named one of the top 20 women in cyber in Canada. So to realize my project of becoming a pen tester, I relied on an education uh, science concept by Philippe Carré. You can see the definition on the screen. It's called Apprenance. And my project involves six steps such as e-learning, CTF, learning expeditions, internship conferences, and volunteering. And so in order to document this approach, I created a blog to share my experience. And I also built an analysis grid of skills that were resulting from the whole project. And I achieved my goal by being hired as a pen tester in Canada, but uh, my desire to learn remains as strong as it was at the first time. So what is a hacker? So if you look up the definition of a hacker, so unless you go to specialized website, the general definition is pejorative. You will find terms like snoop, for example, and there will be the notion of illegality. But basically a hacker is someone who hijacks the use of a tool to do something else. So it's someone who is curious about how a system works. So um, as you might know, there are different types of hacker. You have white hat, gray hat, and black hat. And here we are going to talk about white hack hackers who are also known as ethical hackers. And at the end, we will have a fun with um, a Kahoot quiz. So what is pen test? So pen test is when you attempt to break into a system to check its safety. So you will aim to find vulnerabilities so that they can be patched. And there are different types of pen test and I'm going to present some of them. So you have external pen test. So we are going to try to break into the target system from the outside of the network. So there are different methods for doing that. So for example, we can try to find out if an administration interface of the target company system is available from the internet. So for example, if you have uh, the employees of a company X who must use an application to take their holidays. So if the login page of this application is available on the internet, it could be hacked and this will expose sensitive data. So our goal here as Pentester will be to try to connect to this application, and this will give us a first access in the client's network. We also have um, vulnerability assessment. So this is uh, when we are going to use an automatic scanner to scan our customer IP address, and we are going to um, analyze the findings. We have internal pen test. So for our internal pen test, we attempt to break into a system from the inside of the network. So once you are at the consumer location, you connect 
uh, with a, uh, an Ethernet cable or to the Wi-Fi, and you try to become a network administrator. And so an administrator has all the access on the system. So it's like someone would manage to steal the personal data of all the people working in the company. And we have a Wi-Fi test, so we are going to check uh, the Wi-Fi security. Like, is it easy to connect? We are going to check if the password is strong enough and if the technology used are reliable, because some technology have been depreciated because they were found to be vulnerable. So a secure Wi-Fi will avoid that a cyber criminal can be legitimate in a network like um, any other person connected to the network. So there is also social engineering. So some companies offer phishing campaigns. So we will do what an attacker would do and we'll be able to find out um, how many people read the email and how many linked on, clicked on the link. And so as a result, the company will be able to put a better awareness policy in place. So, uh, for physical intrusion, we are going to try to break into a building. So we can either make scenarios to try to manipulate people to let us in or um, break in at night, for example. And uh, we will have a target to reach in the building. And if you want an example, um, I made an article on my blog named uh, Codename2300 about one experience I had of a physical pen test. Um, I will share uh, the links on Discord afterwards if you, if you need them. So for denial of service attack, um, so different attacks can lead to denial of service. And denial of service happens when too many people try to access an application or a service at the same time. So the application becomes unavailable. So we will test um, uh, them to evaluate the resistance of the system to denial of service. So for a red team, uh, the goal will be to mainly check the ability of a company to detect attacks rather than focusing on finding a lot of vulnerabilities. And so also we can test applications, so for example, web applications, and we are trying to access sensitive data to become an administrator, uh, or, and we will uh, use the most common black hat attacks to do this. So for instance, uh, we have SQL injection, so it's an attack that allows to get information from the database, and the database contains all the information needed to run an application. But I will explain this more precisely later. So now that we have seen the different types of pen tests, I'm going to explain the steps of a pen test. So there are different phases in a pen test because when we test, we do not go straight to the attack phase. We need to plan it with the customer. We need to define the scope and take care of the legal matters. So this is the planning phase. And then we gather information about the target, how does it work, what are the used technologies, and this is the discovery phase. And after we attack it, we take many notes in the process and we gather proof. So this is the attack phase. And finally, we produce a report with explanation on how to reproduce the flow and how to correct it. So, uh, to go deeper, I can share with you uh, what a typical day as a pen tester look like. So first, I'm going to open my mailbox and send an email to the customer whose system I'm testing. And sometimes we have calls to prepare a new project. And we also have meetings with the team uh, to talk about our projects and how to be more efficient in our work. But most of the time, we test or we write reports. So you learn something new every day because every day you see different technologies. But, and, and this is what I really like, I, because I really like learning from my peers or, or discovering new technologies and, and trying new things on these new technologies. So if you're interested in pen tests and you wish to know which skills are necessary, I'm going to present some of them. So you have to be curious. You need to question everything. You need to be creative. You have to be persistent because sometimes things will not uh, work right away, so you have to try something else. Uh, you have to be very organized and you need to love learning and sharing. So share your knowledge with people, ask them about what they know because it's always good to learn new things. And something that was really helpful for me when I was um, looking for an opportunity as a pen tester 
is my blog because this is like a real portfolio of who I am and uh, what I do and I know. So a blog is not mandatory, of course. You can, for instance, write article on LinkedIn or, or uh, about things you do or things you like and share CTF write up, explain a concept you're passionate about. So it can take many different forms. And what is good also is to go in the wild, meet people from the community, get involved in the community and go to conferences, talk to speakers or attendees and create an association with your friend, for example. So there are many different examples of things you can do. So now we are going to dive into practice with the example of web pen testing. So as you know, web pen testing is a type of pen test and now every organization or business has a website, but those websites can be a nest of vulnerabilities. So in order to keep people safe, you can help them by testing their website. And so in this example, I'm going to explain some web vulnerabilities, present some tools and talk about what I have seen in real context. So, as you probably know, uh, OWASP is a non-profit foundation that aims to improve the security of web applications. And they have a top 10 of the most found vulnerabilities that you can see on the screen here. And so we will talk later in details about the first one, specifically SQL injection and directory traversal and the seventh one. And uh, I chose to demonstrate those because they are uh, very visual. So for the demo, I used uh, Mutilide that I installed via Metasploitable 2. So you can also install Mutilide alone on a web server, but if you prefer, but this is a vulnerable app, so you have to be careful with this. And also before I show you the demo, it's very important that you're aware that you must always have the authorization of the owner of the website to test because otherwise it's illegal. And so the machine I use on the demo are made for this purpose, so please uh, be careful with this. And so in the video demo, I will show you the vulnerabilities and tools displayed on the screen, but first I want to um, provide uh, briefly some explanation on, on those so that you can completely understand what you will see in the video. So cross-site scripting, which is also known also known as um, XSS, is a security vulnerability that is typically found in web applications. So it's a type of injection which can allow an attacker to um, execute malicious scripts and have it execute on a victim's machine. So with XSS, you can try to steal the admin cookie, get complete control over a browser, or exploit a vulnerable plugin, or perform keylogging. So that would mean that you are able to record every input made on a keyboard. So you have um, three main type of XSS. You have stored XSS, so this is when you are able to store your uh, XSS payload on the database of the target. And this way, um, the payload will be working for every user who would access the page. So for instance, um, if you have a page on a web forum, you are able to leave a message that will be stored on the database for user to see. So if your payload is interpreted, it will be stored in the database as well and will be executed uh, on uh, uh, every time someone will uh, look at this page. So you also have reflected cross-site scripting. So this is when the vulnerability only works on the client side. So the attacker will need to trick a victim into clicking a URL to execute the payload. And dumb-based XSS, so a uh, document object model is a programming interface for HTML and XML document. And it represents the page so that programs can change the document structure, style, and content. So a DOM-based uh, XSS will happen when the application writes data to the document object model without properly sanitize the input. So SQL injection happens when um, an application uses a user-controlled input to create SQL queries without properly validating the input first. So a successful SQL injection attack can read or modify sensitive data from the database, um, execute administration operation on the database, such as uh, shutting it down, 
and in some cases uh, issue commands on the operating system. So we have three types of SQL injection. We have inbound, so this is when the data extracted with the injection is presented directly in the application web page. So uh, error-based SQL injection will belong to this type. And uh, we have blind, so this is when an attacker is able to reconstruct the database structure by setting uh, payloads and observing the web application response and the resulting behavior of the database server. So for instance, uh, Boolean-based Boolean and time-based SQL injection belongs also to uh, the blind type of SQL injection. And out of band, which is the least common type of SQL injection, is when an attacker is um, unable to use the same channel to launch the attack and gather results. So they would use techniques that would rely on uh, the database server ability to make DNS or HTTP requests to get the data from the database. So a uh, directory traversal is a vulnerability that allows an attacker to read arbitrary files on the server that is running on an application. And it happens when application plays user input into file paths. So with this attack, you are able to get application code and data and credentials for backend system and sensitive operating system files. And so in some cases, an attacker might be able to write arbitrary files on the server which would uh, allow them to modify application data or behavior and so ultimately take full control of the server. So depending on the operating system behind, the payload will be different as well as the file you will query for. But the ultimate goal of this attack will be to take um, full control of the server. And the most famous payload is the one you see on the screen, which is uh, going to work on a Linux uh, server. So the tools I'm going to demonstrate, so we have a uh, verb suite, so proxy tools and further. Um, proxy, uh, verb suite is a proxy and the main goal will be to uh, intercept and analyze or modify queries. And you have um, uh, OWASP ZAP, which is open source. Uh, verb suite is uh, proprietary. There's a free community version and a paid pro version. And so as we will navigate through the target application, the proxies will detect potentially vulnerable elements and we will be able to analyze them and validate if they are indeed vulnerable. And also you have uh, the further, so uh, for instance, there. So it's a tool that is used to send a series of payloads or, uh, in order to um, uh, brute force administration pages or uh, browse in, in a website. So this can be done with a Burp Intruder or Derp. And so with Burp Intruder, you can try different cross-site scripting payloads on an injection point, for example. Uh, we can also try to brute force an authentication form. And with Derp, you can list the directories of a website with a predefined list of rules. So this is time for the video demo. So I'm gonna start it, but I need to put it in full screen. And I'm just going to uh, force the quality to be high and put it at little. So the first one is stored excesses. So as you can see, this is Mutilide, as I was mentioned before. And so uh, we have uh, the famous blog example I mentioned before. And we are going to be uh, to have our input reflected on the page uh, right after. So here we are going to try uh, a, a payload uh, that will generate an alert and show it on the page if it works. And so it worked. So what we can do now is uh, check uh, the code source to see uh, to see how, how how it looks like. Because as you can see here, uh, nothing is uh, shown, but it's because the our code has been interpreted. So can just 
And so now you see that it's just as if the developer was uh, has made this on purpose, except this is our code that we just injected. So now this is SQL injection. So we are going to try to bypass authentication. And so we are going to use another uh, very famous payload uh, with the two dash and the end that will come on the rest of the query so that the password will not be checked. And as you can see, uh, we are able, to, uh, we are logged in as an admin. So for directory traversal, so <laughs> so as you can see, the 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 URL takes a parameter, uh, uh, and so we can try to. Uh, to see if, what we can uh, do if we inject some uh, payloads here. So we are going to inject the payload you actually saw before. And we are able to see, uh, the, so this is like a list of the users on the system. This is not a uh, password, so to speak, but it's still sensitive. And now for Burp Suite. So I'm going to put the ingest set on, on and click anywhere. And then, so you can see that everything is, um, uh, you can see the, the query, what it looks like, and you have a cookie and everything, so you can modify it and send it, and you can just uh, drop it, depends on what you want to do. And now about burp, derp, sorry. So we are going to uh, try to, uh, with a, 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 a word list, you can find many word lists online. And so every time we have a code 200, it means that uh, the page we are available. And so uh, we have the index page, which is okay, but we'll also have a PHP my admin page and this should not be visible because um, it's like uh, the, uh, a way to, um, to, uh, to so the developer will use this to uh, change uh, things on the application. And uh, so I really recommend to explore Kali Linux because um, this is uh, a, a Linux version specif specifically made for pen testing. And so you only not only have uh, web pen testing tools, you also have uh, more general uh, pen, pen testing tools. Okay, I'm just gonna do this again. And it's a full screen because I like it better like this. Okay, so now we are going to see how we can write a pen test report. So um, the executive summary is the part where you need to explain for the executive of a company who will read the report. So it has to be high level explanations with no technical details. And so it contains a global posture that will explain uh, why the findings and attack combination could impact the company. And uh, the the vulnerability report will have all the elements you see on the screen. So you can also use uh, specifically the vulnerability report part for a bug bounty report if you're a bug hunter. And um, the, the, the severity, you have to put the severity in one word. So usually it's low, medium, high, or critical. Uh, the CVSS score, or if you prefer a WASP risk rating score. The detail uh, of the affected intent. So, for instance, if you have uh, found a cross-site scripting, this would be the spot where to put the link, for instance, to, to the injection point. Um, so, after this, you have to give a detailed description uh, with technical details this time on how the flow can be reproduced and an explanation on how to correct it. And uh, finally, uh, you can... Uh, put the evidence so you have to put the evidence with like for instance a request a response of the application exploitation you were able to conduct so uh there's also uh, an article i made on how to write a pen test report on my blog i can share the link afterwards with you so how about what i've seen in real context so I have seen a lot of cross-site scripting. So once I had to test this website that was uh, globally very well implemented, but there was this feature of file upload uh, in which it was designed to be able to download HTML file. 
So I built an empty HTML file and I just added the cross-site scripting, uh, cross scripting payload I showed earlier uh, in, in the video and uh, that worked. Also, I have seen some SQL injections. So for example, uh, once the tool we usually use to dump the database, which is called uh, SQL map, uh, was not able to find the uh, injection. So I could not dump the database, but uh, automatically, I mean, but uh, we found a SQL function that could show the last request made to the database. Uh, and this was a Boolean based SQL injection. So we had to check every char one by one to find the request. And so we made a script that ran all night long and we only got part of the request because the request was 1,000 shards long, but it, it was still uh, very fun to do. Um, also, I have seen strange behaviors in application, like, for example, I had to test this website, but when the session was expiring, it would redirect me to a connected session of the administration tool of the website. So uh, it was very surprising. And Finally, uh, what I often see also is the lack of clickjacking protection. So what I like to do when testing multiple uh, websites for the same company is to try to show all the websites in the same page in, the, in uh, multiple iframes and see which one will be visible or not. Okay, so now it's going to be time for the Kahoot quiz. So. So you have to go to you have to go to kahoot.it, https.kahoot.it. I can actually write it on the Discord for you. And uh, you will see a game pin. And so you uh, the question will appear here and uh, on, on my screen, I mean, and you will have to answer to the question uh, from your browser. So I'm going to wait a few minutes for you to be able to join. Uh, so you have to be very quick because it's only 10 seconds to answer. So don't panic, but uh, try to answer. Uh, it, it's okay if it's not the right answer, we're here to learn. I'm just going to wait one more minute and then I, I will go so that we're not behind on the schedule. Okay, let's go. Okay, so first question, what is Burp Suite? I'm just gonna... Okay, five good answers. Good job, everyone. It's gonna be tricky. Okay, Marie, you're first. Good job. Which of these payloads can be used for cross-site scripting? Hurry up, you only have five seconds left. <laughs> and good job, many people got the answer. So he who doesn't hack seems to have some knowledge, even if he doesn't hack. Good, good job. Good job, everyone. So which Linux distribution is specifically made for pen testing? You really uh, saw it quickly in my video demo. Yeah, okay, you're very quick, like you didn't even wait for the... Okay, good job, everyone. Okay, so there's going to be a fight for the top. True or false, if an application is vulnerable to directory traversal, you will always be able to access slash etc slash passwd. 
I, I said it on my slide. Yeah, good job. So this is a payload for a Linux server, this one. Okay, so, so Tyro just got on the top and good job everyone. Keep going. How many different main type of cross-site scripting are there? Are there 10, three, four, or two? So it's main types. Yes, good job. Okay, it's a little fight for the top, but it's still fun. So I'm able to extract data by generating error with SQL injection. Which type of SQL injection is this? Is it in-band, blind, out-of-band, or in a rock band? Yeah, good job. Okay, some of you did not have time to answer. It's very, very quick. So the first vulnerability of OWASP top 10 is, so I hope you remember the slide. <laughs> I was quite quick. Yeah, good job. Okay, so Tyro is still on the top, but good job everyone, because everyone is answering questions, so that's cool. So the phases in pen test in, of pen test in order are, so I actually spend a more time on this. So yeah, good job, everyone got it. And so which of these is not a pen test type? Is it Wi-Fi internal, external, or blue team? Yeah, <laughs> I'm amazed, everyone has it. Okay, time for the podium. So congratulations, Aiki, for the third place. He who doesn't hack is the second place. And the winner is Tyro. Okay, good job, everyone, and thanks for um, taking part in, in this quiz. I hope you had fun. I always have fun watching you. Up, so... Now I'm going to briefly uh, show you some resources. So these are the resources uh, I, uh, about the vulnerabilities uh, on OWASP I mentioned, so XSS, SQL injection, and path traversal. And also, uh, when one wants to learn Pentest, it's very important to practice. And you can find a lot of very interesting resources. So it can be either directly online or by creating your own lab, like the one I show on my video. So for instance, you can start practicing with TryHackMe, which is very good uh, if you have no prior experience. And uh, when, you, when you feel comfortable enough, you can switch to Hack the Box. And I also made an article on how to get started with pen testing, so I will send it afterwards on the on the Discord channel. And so before taking some questions, I would like to take some time to thank uh, Johnny Xmas for coaching me for this talk. It was very nice to meet you. And uh, that's it. I'm ready for questions if you have any. Excellent talk. So uh, let's see, going up, got Johnny asking, how common is it to find stored cross-site scripting out there? It seems like a pretty basic vulnerability and easy one to fix. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, I don't really know. Uh, I know it's not, uh, I'm not sure it's that simple to fix because I, I see that people are struggling a lot with it. So what I usually recommend is to have a look at the uh, Tanya Janka's book, uh, which is called Alice and Bob Learn Application Security, because it's actually very well documented. And of course, the OWASP documentation is very good help for fixing this. Let's see. Do you see any others over there, Mel? Any other? Sorry? 
Oh, no. Uh, I think that was the only question. We got any more questions in Discord? That's the only one I saw. If we don't, I would like to ask, what is your favorite severity rating classification system? Uh, for now, it's uh, CVSS because it's uh, the one I used to use, but I really like to try out uh, the OWASP risk rating one because it seems very good and it seems to be, you know, uh, more precise. So I, I really wonder how is it in terms of business impact uh, um, specifically. So a lot of people don't understand the purpose in using a purposefully vulnerable like image box app or website. Um, a lot of blue teamers will say, well, that was already intended to be broken. And a lot of red teamers say, why am I trying to break something that I know is already broken? So can you please explain the purpose in using intentionally vulnerable things to practice hacking on? Well, it's, uh, I, I hear that it's, uh, I, I can understand that uh, it's frustrating because it's not always realistic, but uh, also it's very good to practice. So I, I think so when you're beginning, it's, it's good to have some, uh, you know, uh, vulnerable things like this to practice and to hack away. But if you want more real context, you can also uh, uh, participate in bug bounty programs, which are going to be a re real context and you are going to uh, test uh, things from the real life. Yeah, I'll echo that a bit by saying that um, when you're pen testing things, if you have like a payload or if you have a, a post exploit module that you're using and it doesn't work, like in the wild, then like you're asking yourselves one of two questions. Did the website or application thwart the attack or did the module just not work? So when you intentionally launch things that you intend on using at things that you know it's supposed to work on because it's purposefully vulnerable, it gives you validation that if it's not working in the wild, it's probably because there's a mitigation there and it's not your payload or your module that is in fact the problem. So it's useful for custom payload development. It's useful for removing unknown factors from your kill chain in a testing environment before you use it live. And um, it's also useful because if you can obtain a copy of an image or like that's not intentionally vulnerable, but a copy of a, a box image that you plan on testing, you can develop better payloads for that thing because you've got samples of the EDR um, and other solutions and mitigations that might be on it to give you practice getting around those things. So yeah, those are really the purpose that those things serve. If anyone ever gives you any pushback, that's why you should do it. Yeah, that's Jason, a very good point. Jason has a question is what is a good beginner tool to practice using and reading up on to start learning pen testing? Is it Burp Suite? You know, Burp Suite is very good for this. Uh because you you really get to see how a request is formed and the impact of uh when you modify your request what what the result you get so yeah i would say burp sheet is is really nice or you also, if you don't want to pay for the pro version you have the free community version or you can uh, try uh, OWASP zap as well which is very good as well and it's free yeah and burp has an academy called port swigger academy which is very similar to what you find at try hack me um where they will actually teach you in lab version and then let you try it live with you with their tool so um if you want to get started with web app pen testing burp is great i think it depends on the type of pen testing you want to do if you want to get started with wireless if you want to get started with network pivot if you want to get started with c2 if you want to get started with web app those are all going to be different tools like people who are like oh i'm a web app pen tester and i use cobalt strike i'm like well cobalt strike isn't really a web app tool so, you know, the tools that you want to get started with kind of depend on the type of ten pen testing that you want to get started doing. All right, so we're coming up on time. I see Vevek is already in the channel. Excellent. Um, Gabrielle, you do have a request to please drop your blog links into Discord oh, yeah. so people can go read up on the things that you've mentioned. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for calling such great attention to web app pen testing. <laughs> I should see none of these basic vulnerabilities in any of your web apps now that you guys have seen this talk, I hope. All I can say is, look, I beat Meryl in the questionnaire. And you did. God, I meant to hit <laughs> yellow. I was like, right now. I was like, dang it. And then once you lose one question, you're screwed. There's no way you're coming back from that. Stupid. Well, thank you for having me and have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you. Awesome talk.
Bye. Thank you.